As of mid-September, widely available is going to become Medtronic's quadrupolar lead, the Viva Quad XT and Viva Quad 5, cardiac resynchronization therapy, defibrillator, the CRTD. And I wanted to get an idea of how this, uh, the, the whole uh, quadrupolar lead process works and whether it's you know, a, a good advance. So I figured we would talk to Dr. Rachel Lampert, who is an associate professor at Yale School of Medicine and also an editorial board member of the Cardiac Rhythm Management Community within CardioSource. We have a great deal of, of communities within CardioSource, so if you haven't looked up your favorite yet, please do. Okay, in this particular case, we're looking at quadrupolar leads. and. You know, I remember quadraphonic years ago. It wasn't much of a difference from uh, stereo, didn't last long. Mm -hmm. In this case, how are we doing with these new types of leads for CRT? Well, I think the quadrupolar lead is going to be here to stay, unlike quadraphonic. I think uh, uh, the Medtronic lead is coming out this week, but uh, there, there's been a St. Jude lead called the Quartet that's been out for some time. It's been implanted in a large number of people and really has shown advantages. Cardiac resynchronization therapy in general has really been a wonderful advance uh, for patients with heart failure and early heart failure, um, prevent uh, improving mortality, hospitalizations, quality of life. Um, but up to, unfortunately, up to about a third of patients don't respond to CRT. And there's a lot of reasons why people don't respond, but uh, at least some studies have suggested that up to 20% of the non-responders is because you can't get an adequate site in the heart. So with CRT, uh, the, the way it's done now uh, through the, the coronary venous system, you're limited by what the anatomy is. And uh, unfortunately, often you may have a vein that seems to be in a good position, but there's other limitations that you can't get good electrical properties or you have phrenic stimulation, stimulation of the diaphragm. And so I think the quadrupolar lead is uh, really going to uh, be helpful with those. The St. Jude lead has been out for a while called the Quartet, and there has been data accumulating um, about the benefits of quadrupolar leads. Um, the first randomized trial was presented here at this meeting yesterday uh, as one of the late-breaking trials and showed uh, in, in a randomized fashion that uh, it did improve procedural times and uh, procedural uh, uh, difficulties were decreased in a, in a significant percentage of the, of the patients. I think the number needed to treat was, was really about uh, less than 10 in order to see an advantage uh, in the operative of, uh, 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 lack of complications operatively, and there was some improvement um, as an individualized uh, endpoint in the long-term uh, performance of the lead as well. Uh, basically what the quadrupolar lead does is uh, it enables you to put the lead far out into the apex where you don't necessarily want to pace far out in the apex, but you can put the lead far out to get that stability, but then pace from uh, a more basal uh, location using the more proximal electrodes. And so I think uh, all of the quadrupolar leads are really going to be uh, a big advantage there. Um, there's also been data, actually I forgot to mention, there was an observational study of over 20,000 patients that's actually shown improved mortality with the quadrupolar lead. So I think the quadrupolar lead really is here to stay and it's going to be a big advantage. So is there an advantage with the new design that's being released? by Medtronic? You know, I think each of the uh, available, well, each of the upcoming uh, leads, available or upcoming leads, has its own advantages. Um, so that I think the St. Jude lead, we have uh, all uh, the benefit of a, a large body of experience now. The Medtronic lead has a couple of engineering features that I think are going to be very good. Um, the two center electrodes are very closely spaced with uh, the Medtronic lead, which will um, uh, a further decrease the possibility of pacing the diaphragm because it's a pacing between two uh, near, near field electrodes. So I think that's going to be a big advantage. Uh, I think the leads also are steroid eluding, uh, which is going to further lower thresholds uh, wow. from even the uh, existing quadrupolar leads. Another neat feature of the Medtronic system uh, is part of the device itself is uh, they can basically test all of the possible configurations uh, very rapidly so that you, the, the implanter doesn't have to sit there and test each pair of electrodes uh, individually, and I think that'll be a big advantage too. So in general, what's the niche that, the, that you should think of when you're thinking of implanting a CRT? Uh, the, with the quadrupolar lead, I think ultimately probably everyone's gonna end up 
uh, going towards quadrupolar. I think, too, I, did, I would like to mention also that uh, there's other leads as well that are in development. Boston Scientific has a lead in clinical trials now called the Acuity that has other advantages. It has, I think, even more uh, potential programmable vectors uh, amongst the electrodes and using the CAN as well in unipolar fashion. So if you're not so using it already yeah. in clinical practice, you probably need to start paying yeah, attention to the data and just see where it would fit in your practice. Yeah, I think ultimately, probably most patients, the whole field will just move towards that that way. I think probably the, the companies will just stop making the bipolar leads because the quad, right now the quadrupolar is more expensive, but I think ultimately uh, the bipolar will probably just be phased out. Wow. So it's going to have a lot longer life than quadraphonic. Yeah, I think so. Very nice. I think so. Uh, we have so many communities on CardioSource. Please check out the uh, Cardiac Rhythm Management one as well as all the others. For CardioSource World News, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.